Acts 1, 9 through 11. When he had said these, this, and they watched, he was lifted up, and a cloud removed him from their sight. As Christians, things are going to pass from our life. Christ ain't going to leave us because he has a spirit in us. But there's things we're going to have to watch fed by people that we may have been around, influenced by with the world. Our bar buddies, they're going to have to go. People who we actively encouraged by sin with are going to have to be removed from our lives. So this is what we're going to see go by in the form of our lives. Things that we may have held dear, but because we have pride in our hearts, we're not going to hold these things dear anymore because we have him that we may slip up and fall into these things. Verse 7. Right. No. Lord. Wait, no. Okay, verse 10. The cloud removed him from sight. And he was going up and went as they lifted. As they were gazing into the sky. All. Like, all at once they stood beside them, two men in white. When Christ returns, there's going to be two men that come before him. And when, and when Christ returns, he will descend from a crowd. But too many times we're standing watching and waiting on the Lord's return, and we're missing out what we ha he has for us until he returns. We focus too much on heaven and his returning that we don't focus on the Great Commission and living life for him. We're all focused on the end result, but not what he has for us to get there most of the time. And sometimes it will take a man or two to talk to us or a person or, or two to talk to us and, and make us realize what are we doing we're just standing around doing nothing waiting on Christ to return and too many times the church is doing this standing around doing nothing waiting on Christ to return too many times we're inactive not trying to do what we need to do too many times we expect other people to do what God has called us to do. Too many times we look at the preacher, the pastor, the deacons to do what God has called us to do. Well, God has called them to be pastors or teaching, evangelism, going out, witnessing, going to visit people in the hospital. This is the thing for them. No. This is the thing for the church. The Great Commission wasn't given to just pastors or deacons or preachers or evangelists. It was given to a man that sits in the back row. It was given to a man that came to Christ in Bible. It was given to anybody who receives the Holy Spirit. Anybody who came to faith is responsible for doing the Great Commission. We shouldn't be standing around looking for Christ to come back. We should, but while we're doing it. If we're just standing around looking, we don't really prepare for Him coming back. We should be, as John the Baptist was, preparing for His coming and tell people about His return and tell people about what He did while He's here. Teach them. Evangelize them. Share the gospel with them. But we shouldn't be solely focused on what He hasn't done yet. Too many times we can see what the Lord is going to do for us and by us. 
sweetheart, we solely focus on this that we miss what he's doing through us now. Too many times we're focused on such goals that maybe not even set by us, by others. Sometimes we're too focused on pleasing others and realize we need to do not worry about that. Worry about what God has for us, what He wants for us now. Now, all these disciples were looking up in the clouds. Not a one of them thought He's given us a mission to do. We need to go do it. Not a one of them. Sometimes we're going to have to. Wait. Have someone come to us to realize what God has for us. Other times, He'll just will know. Either way, He's going to let us know what He has for us. If we're ready to receive it. If we're standing up looking at the clouds, He's going to have to use something to get our attention before He tells us what's in store for us. Two men in white who said, Men of Galilee, why stand there looking up into the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken away from you, up to heaven will come in the same way as you have seen him go. Jesus is going to return. It's a promise. It's going to happen. But we don't need. We need to be concerned with what He has for us when He returns. Be doing what He has for us. There's one reason why we don't know the set date of His return. He don't want us to know because He wants us to continue on be working. He don't want us to have a time clock. Well, I've got 12 days left and I've got 376 days left. Because He wants us to work today. And prepare to work for him tomorrow. He wants us to do what we're called to do by his purpose. But he's going to return. This is important that he was going to return. Because he had not set up his earthly reign yet. Because he has not set up his earthly reign yet, he hasn't fulfilled his all of his role as Messiah. That will be done in this thousand year reign. So it was important for them to know he was going to return. So they would know that hey, this is the Messiah. Because some of them, until this promise was made, because God's word ain't going to come contradict itself and until this was said his word only mentioned about Christ coming to reign when Christ died rose again left after 40 days never set up a kingdom on earth to reign on So they may have been doubting. Well, according to the word, he did a lot of good things. I believe he's the son of God, but we gotta wait on this Messiah to set up his kingdom. We gotta and the Messiah's gonna set up a kingdom. We all know that, you know that Peter. You know that Andrew. And John. They all knew it. So while they may have believed Jesus was the Son of God still because until this was stated that he's going to return, they may have not. Oh, he can't be a Messiah then. They may have had a doubt. And got into author of confusion. Because they would have got doubt because of what God, Christ, did. 
and because of what the word said, God would have fixed their doubt in that area. Because he would have contradicted himself. If they would not been later words saying he's gonna come back and rain. I'm so glad he's gonna come back and rain. Too many times people put trust in political parties, in government, in people, maybe in doctors. But the only one we truly can trust, the only one who truly is going to fix things, is the one who's fixed things the whole time, Christ Jesus. The government ain't going to fix things. No amount of money's going to fix world problems. No amount of war's going to fix world problems. Only Christ, by Him returning, His world's going to be good again.